Richarlison again, this is the chance, he can't miss from here, he absolutely can't miss and the goal we've been wanting to see for the entire episode happens, Richarlison gets his first goal, Calvert-Lewin now looks for Pedri, that is outrageous from Pedri and Usman Dembele with a lovely finish, Pedri has completely outclassed Villarreal here. So here we are back again with another episode of the Barcelona career mode series over on FIFA 21. Now it really is a big episode as we take on Juventus in the Champions League. We'll be up against Cristiano Ronaldo in this one. The first leg at the camp now will be in today's episode and that's going to be a massive game. Let's not forget we're still on transfer deadline so there's room for us making any more signings, potentially departures. But at the moment I'm pretty happy with my squad so I don't really anticipate any Anything big happening on deadline day this time around but of course you guys know how career mode transfers and all work anything can happen on deadline day now we're also gonna have a big discussion on the future of this series a job offer from PSG has definitely tempted me we'll be talking a lot about this in today's episode but if you guys are enjoying the Barca career mode, we've got Champions League action, Deadline Day, La Liga games and a lot more. Drop a like in the video, subscribe if you're new around here and let's get this underway. Press conference, get involved by dropping in your questions down in the comment section below. First one of the day, put Carlos Elena in the transfer list and sell him as soon as someone comes with a decent offer for him and make extra funds in the summer transfer window. Yeah, last episode we had an offer coming from FC Porto for Carlos Selenia, which honestly, I'm inclined to accept. I know we gave him a new contract in the last episode, but that was only for the purpose of not having him leave for free. He's 24 and is still 76 rated. It kind of feels pointless keeping him. Now, maybe in real life he's got potential to still improve, but I don't see him in Coleman's plans. And nor is he in our plans. I'd rather give more opportunities to players like Gravenberg, Xavi Simmons, Pedri that actually have Carlos Selenia in the squad. So, honestly, I'm gonna accept this offer from FC Porto. 11.5 million. There you go, it's accepted. We'll see if this deal goes through on transfer deadline day or not. Next up, if Puig completes the Xavi's air objective, are you going to give him the number 6 jersey as that was Xavi's number in real life? That is actually a very good idea. Maybe we should do that with both Ricky Puig and Ansu Fati. If they complete their respective objectives, we should give them, you know, Ricky Puig the number 6 and of course Ansu Fati the number 10. Let me know in the comments section if you guys are cool with that. By this comment, I guess you guys are. That'd be a pretty good idea. So let's hope we can complete the objectives with both Ricky Puig and Ansu Fati as quickly as possible to get them those, you know, historic kit numbers. Next up, when will you be able to get the realism mod? Your manager is killing me. You guys know the glitches in career mode at the moment. I mean, there's only one major glitch in the game mode this time around, and that's the manager glitch of him looking like an absolute clown with the icon jersey about the realism mod though i'm honestly waiting so much for it you guys know we had so much fun doing the leeds career mode back on fifa 20 with the realism mod and all it was unbelievable with the player faces and a lot more i think the realism mod on pc will be out either next month or late this month so that's pretty awesome we should have that soon but yeah, until then, it's literally the waiting game. Also, next-gen FIFA comes out, I think, December 4th. So definitely going to do content around that. But of course, don't know what features are coming for next-gen career mode. My Xbox Series X comes in like a few days. I might do a video of FIFA 21 on it, even without the, you know, next-gen proper update. That could be fun to see. But yeah, about the realism mod, I am I'm waiting for it as much as you guys, man. Because I want the player faces, I want the series that we do on the channel to be as realistic as possible. So for now, we're playing the waiting game. But for now, press conference done. Let's move on. Pedri was absolutely outstanding in that last episode. One of the performances he put in, I think, against Villarreal. It was simply sensational, an assist, in fact two assists and a goal, it was, yeah, Pedri was outstanding and definitely worthy of being player of the episode. Now, okay guys, before we get any further, we've got a big decision and discussion to have. PSG, job offer, potential job openings. We can actually move to PSG in this series and try and win the Champions League with them and not just PSG. But Leo Messi as well. One last reunion with Messi. Oh my god. 
next season, moving to PSG is a real option for me because I do fancy playing with Messi again and winning the Champions League with a different club. With Messi, this is, this is definitely a tempting one, guys. I'm not going to lie. We've had a great time at Barcelona. And if we win, let's say, a big trophy this season, I would be inclined to moving into PSG and rounding off this save with another club. Let me know in the comment section if that is something you guys are keen for. Because I think the challenge of going to PSG with Messi, Coutinho, Mbappe, Neymar. I mean, yes, we've got a god squad, but winning the Champions League with them would be a lot of fun. Let me know in the comments section if that is something you guys are keen for. We could do one season with PSG before like next gen drops and then we'll be doing like a Premier League road to glory career mode, I presume. But this is honestly a real option right now. PSG, let me know in the comments section what you guys are thinking. Transfer deadline day, as, as of this moment, the only thing we're doing on deadline day is trying to get rid of Carlos Elenia if that deal goes through. Absolutely brilliant. Apart from that, not really keen on making anything happen. As you guys can see, Alenia doesn't want to leave. He's rejected the negotiations. We get an offer for Delict. 170 million. Oh my goodness. I'm rejecting the offer. Last thing I want is Delict leaving. He's so good in this game. Another offer coming in for Carlos Alenia. Is he going to accept this offer this time around? 11.5 million from Crystal Palace. Let's see if this deal goes through. Literally on the final hour of transfer deadline day, Alenia has been sold. That's awesome. We'll be getting about 10 million for him. And there you go. Transfer window has shut. We're left with this squad until the end of the season. I think it's a decent team. I'm not sure if we're favorites for the Champions League, but with that back line and the attack in the midfield the players we've got in certain positions, I think we can definitely compete in the Champions League. And I can't wait to see how this season progresses. Quick look at our season objectives before we get any further. As I've said, I'm looking forward to making more progress. Apart from that, as you guys know, the Xavi Z objective and the Ansu Fati objective that we got, if we complete them, those two players will be getting new kit numbers. So I'm hoping we can start making more and more progress with those objectives. Okay guys, I'm actually running super late today and that's why in today's episode, we're only gonna have a couple of games, which will be against Sevilla and Juventus. We'll be simulating the rest of the games. This Valencia one I would have loved to play it, but oh well, we're gonna leave it to chance. Our team is way better than theirs, so we should be getting through regardless. We used our strongest team against Valencia and we just about got through them. 2-1, Usman Dembele scoring a 71st minute winner for us. De Jong scored as well, that's a relief. Okay, what on earth is going on in the Spanish Cup? This is a trophy by the way, we haven't won at all in this series, so I'd love to win it. We've drawn Mallorca in the semi-finals. What happened to all the big clubs? Mallorca knocked out Atleti. Real Madrid not even in the quarterfinals. Fair enough, this is a great opportunity for us to win the Spanish Cup this season. Getting this one against Osasuna out of the way as we get ourselves a 1-0 win. Ricky Puig scoring the winner, so good three points in La Liga. Now we've got an additional game to play against Mallorca in the Spanish Cup. I'm pretty sure there are two legs in the Spanish Cup semi-finals. Convenient 2-0 win for us in the first leg. Good to see Richarlison on the score sheet. In fact, it was Xavi Simmons who scored as well. And we get a clean sheet with, of course, Eric Garcia and Conde. That helps us out with the objectives. Oh, wow. We've absolutely demolished UD Almeria. 6-2. Who scored the goals for us? This is a big win for us in La Liga. Memphis with a brace. Calvert-Lewin with a brace. Dembele scored. Junior Firpo as well. Good three points in La Liga once again. Now, this is the last game we're simulating today, I promise. This is how the table is in La Liga at the moment. We're actually doing pretty well this season. 62 points after 23 games is outrageous. The problem is Real Madrid have stayed one step above us. 63 points for them. We've got to keep winning to keep pace with Real Madrid. And up next, we've got a difficult game against Sevilla. Now, although they're in 11th place, away... At the Ramon sanchez Pijuan games are never easy. This is going to be a tricky affair. I'm forced to make some really heavy rotations for this one because midweek we've got that big Champions League game against Juventus and that is really, really important for our season. So for now, we've got Richarlison starting, Pedri, Xavi Simmons getting an opportunity. Because Ansu Fati is our only like proper left winger, Adama Traore is forced to play out of position on that left side, but it's fine. He still gets a plus four overall boost. Trincao starts Conde as well. It's still a strong Barca team that I guess we expect to get a win here at Sevilla. Let's get into it. I'm surprised at how bad Sevilla are doing in La Liga in this series because they're normally a team usually like higher up the table, but fair enough, I guess. Not the best of seasons for them, but 
I think that's the kind of situation we need to take advantage of and get ourselves a simple win here at the Ramon Sanchez Pijuan. Early chance for us though. Could do something. Here's Max Ahrens. Now Trincao inside. I'm going to maybe go for goal. Not really. I'm going to find Pedri. The man in form at the moment. Still Pedri here. Look at the dribbling from him. Back to Gravenberch. Yeah, this attack is gone. Nothing is going to come off it. Or maybe it is. Xavi Simmons can't get the shot off. Gets taken down inside the box. I would love to see a goal coming from Xavi Simmons. Whenever we've simulated games, he's actually been unbelievable. So, let's see. Pedri scooping this one for Adama Traore. Can he score though? Adama Traore, 1-0 Barcelona. Let's go. That is a phenomenal finish from the Spaniard. Pedri picking up an assist for that. Maybe Adama can be super effective on that left side as well. Because he can cut in and shoot. We know he's got the pace to do so. And there you have it, Barcelona with the early advantage, courtesy of a lovely Pedri scooped pass. Adama chests it down, bang. Lovely finish, just what you need to see as Barcelona make it 1-0. There's Xavi Simmons on the ball. There's the trickery from Xavi Simmons. He looks to be in the mood today. He loses the ball, but Richarlison gets there. Now Pedri in behind. Chance for Pedri to score. Go on. Lovely finish. Sevilla just simply cannot compete with us at this point. There's a reason why they're 11th in the, in the La Liga, because they're not really a good side. We've gotten in behind twice, easily. And this time, Pedri, after assisting the first goal, gets on the score sheet himself. Richarlison providing here. Xavi Simmons was great in the build-up as well. We're playing some good FIFA at the moment. And that's why we're leading 2-0 against Sevilla. The perfect way to warm up before that big Juve game. Oh, chance here for Sevilla to get themselves a goal back. I think Angelino got a foot to it. He did, and that's why it's a corner. Could have easily been 2-1 Sevilla. Corner coming in for them now. De Stegen punches it away. Should be our ball. It is in chance again for Sevilla. Problems here for Aswan Jordan on the ball here. Could go for goal. This is chaotic from Sevilla and our defense as well. Can we get the ball away somehow? Conde puts in a good challenge and finally we do. Oh, here we go now with Adama Traore on the break. There is literally no stopping Adama. He's just way too quick. There is something stopping Adama and that's his finishing. Tries to find Xavi Simmons. Looking to control the game. Sees Pedri. Pedri with the roulette. But ah, the defender read that one so easily. I'm not going to lie. But I'm loving Xavi Simmons and Pedri together in midfield. They're just so, so good. Xavi Simmons has been a big surprise because he's only 71 rated, yet he's feeling so confident and good on the volley. It's actually a lot of fun using him. Sevilla so still trying to create something with John Jordan. Delict, what's he doing, man? Why didn't Delict get the ball there? I'm so confused. Sevilla so find themselves back in the game. Jordan finally gets the goal that he probably deserves because he's had a lot of chances in this one. But why didn't I get the ball with Delict there? I'm really confused. Let's take a look at that replay because that'll explain things much better. Look at the skills from Jordan. The tackle was put in by Delict. How did he not win that? Ah, oh, frustrating and now Sevilla are back in it. Pedri could peel. Oh, Richarlison has made a great run peeling off the defender. Has to be a goal for Richarlison. Why did I go for a finesse shot there? Should have just powered that way through the net. Ah, oh, Richarlison had to score that. The best free kick taker on the pitch at the moment is Angelino. What a downgrade from having Leo Messi last season. But let's see if Angelino can convert this. It's decent and it's off the bar. The amount of free kicks that come off the bar for me, it's crazy. Should have been 3-1 Barca there. Looking for Richarlison again. Getting in onto his right foot. Has to score. Finally, Richarlison gets the goal. I'm not sure he deserves because he's been pretty, uh, pretty average, I guess. In this one, barely any chances, but he comes up with the goods ultimately. 3-1 Barcelona celebrates with that really stupid celebration. And I must say, guys, Adama Traore deserves a lot of credit. Out on that left side, he's looked far more effective than he was ever playing on that right side. So that's something we may need to consider. Maybe he could be a great backup for Ansu Fati, something that I didn't expect to see happen. But Adama really has shined down the left flank. There's Xavi Simmons and I see Trincao making a good run and the next thing you know it's coming. Simple pass for Richarlison, simple goal for Barcelona. Good to see Richarlison grab a brace. That's going to do wonders for his confidence. Trincao with another assist but Xavi Simmons deserves again more credit for that pass he sent through for Trincao. A simple goal ultimately from Barcelona. Cruise control now for us as Barca lead 4-1 against Sevilla and not much time left. Ah, oh, Sevilla have gotten in behind here. Chance for Dimitri Payet. Remember the season he had with West Ham? Shades of that now with that goal. Look at him celebrate like that when, he's, when his team is losing 4-2. 
Well, it is what it is, I suppose. Again, Delict has had a shocker in this one. Positioning has been trash. But anyways, we're still leading 4-2 and it should be still a win. And there you have it. Full time, a really good performance ultimately. Yeah, defensively, we had a few issues here and there. But overall, I thought it was a great performance with our second team. To pick up a win like this, I'll take it. And now we're ready for the big Champions League game against Juve. A great, a great win and a great performance from Richarlison. I still think he has got to do a bit more for us, but it's it's a great step in the right direction, I suppose. A brace from him, love to see it. Real Madrid have finally dropped points. They've not lost a single game in La Liga even yet. They've, I think, drawn a game. That's big for us because now we're top of La Liga, 65 points just by the tiniest of margins. La Liga is once again going to have an incredible finish, of course, with only Barcelona and Real Madrid fighting for the title. But... Yeah, it's only one point that separates the two clubs and we've got an El Clasico coming up soon, so that's going to be epic. For now though, we turn our attentions to the Champions League. Now you guys know in the group stages, we really did mess up, finishing second in our group. So frustrating, 13 points is what we finished on and that's why we're facing Juventus and that's why we've got the first leg at home. Not the best of situations, but we got to get through Juve. We've got to beat big teams anyway in this competition if we want to retain our Champions League trophy. Juventus is going to be an incredible fixture. We need to get ourselves a good result in the first leg and avoid conceding stupid away goals. Once again, doing a bit of scout. Once again, time to do a bit of scouting to see how Juventus are faring in the Serie A. They are top of the league and they are top of the league by a massive margin. Inter Milan are what, 13 points behind them? Juventus have basically won Serie A, so it's, it's first in Italy versus first in Spain at the moment. This is going to be a cracking game. Well, Cristiano Ronaldo is probably going to be the danger man by the looks of things. Five goals in six games, he's Juve's top scorer in the competition. Surprisingly for us, it's Usman Dembele with six in five games. That's an interesting stat. I'm not messing about at all for this one. I'm literally going with what I deem to be my strongest 11. Calvert-Lewin, Depay, De Jong, Puig, Dembele, Fati, all of them starting. My best backline is there as well. And of course, you guys can see the Juventus 11 for this Champions League round of 16 game. Ronaldo, Morata, Dybala, Arthur Melo starting against us this season. That's going to be interesting. They've got Lucas Mora, Douglas Costa, an interesting defense with Gabriel Paulista. They've signed Lucas Hernandez. That's interesting. Juve going to be rocking a three at the back formation. I don't know how that's going to be like, but it's, it's going to be interesting to see. That's the very least. Now, we have faced Juventus before in this series. Last season, Champions League group stages, and I'm not going to lie, they got the better of us. Cristiano Ronaldo just destroyed us, and because of him, we finished second in our group. So... Yeah, Juventus have had the better of us in this series and it's a good opportunity to get some revenge, get a good result here in the first leg. Let's get it done. There you go, Cristiano Ronaldo, Morata, Dybala. That attack is deadly, I'm not going to lie. But here we are, Champions League knockout rounds resume. I don't know why I'm nervous. I won this competition last season, but this season we don't have Messi, we don't have Griezmann to bail us out. It's going to be difficult and I'm not going to lie, against the big teams this season, we have really struggled. Real Madrid have beaten us, Spurs have beaten us, I think Atletico Madrid got the better of us. I think maybe not Atleti, but yeah, the big teams have caused us problems this season. Let's hope that's not the case in this one. Cristiano Ronaldo with a big chance. I don't want to see Ronaldo scoring against me, please, for the sake of humanity, don't let that happen. Yuri Tielemans now, what a signing that is from Juve. I put the challenge in, now Lucas Mora, I think he's offside and that should save us there. Man, Juve have got so much pace in that attack. You guys saw Ronaldo there. He is so tricky and difficult to defend against. This is going to be a really difficult night. Memphis looking to run at that Juve defense. Memphis Depay is just going to go through on his own, I suppose. Looking for the cutback for Ricky Puig, but it's blocked off. Ricky Puig still has the ball, tries to flick it past Lucas Hernandez, but that was never going to work. By the way, De Ligt is also playing against his former team in this one. Ball played in behind for Lucas Mora. The cross for Ronaldo is brilliant, who tried to be clever there. Flick it up longly, but yeah, thankfully that didn't work out. And now on the other end of the pitch, we're sending Ansu Fati through. This has been as end-to-end -end as it gets. Ansu looks to open up space. Ansu Fati goes for goal. Big save from Wojciech Szczesny as it's still nil-nil. This has been nuts. Chances at both ends flying. Ronaldo has been nuts. Ansu creating a chance for us. How has Szczesny saved that, by the way? 
corner. I'm going to be smart about it. I'm not going to whip it in because we never really score from corners. I'm trying something different. Here's Usman Dembele. Dembele opening up space. Usman Dembele. Oh my God. That is a contender for goal of the season. Absolutely. Champions League round of 16 for Dembele to do that. No words. Absolutely no words. He continues to score in the Champions League for us. A rainbow flick to open up space. Continues to take it wide. And then bang. That's a classic Dembele goal, I suppose. You know, left foot. Finessing it into the top left corner. That is outrageous. The finish as well. It had to be perfect to beat Chesney. And it really was. Barcelona get the early advantage at the camp now. We're leading 1-0. Let's go. Luigi, and now the game has really opened up in our favour. Usman Dembele. Once again, left foot. I'm going for another curling effort. It's not going to always work. Chesney this time prevents him from scoring. Ricky Puig once again. Dembele is through. And I see Calvert-Lewin making a really good run. Cross for Calvert. Has to score. How has he missed that, Dominic? I saw the darting run from him. Playing the cross to him was the right thing to do. He normally scores those kind of chances. Maybe it's because it was on his left foot. That should have been 2-0 Barca. Oh. Still Morata. Looks for Dybala. Haven't seen much from the Juve attack since the early days. But they've got a chance here to score. Lucas Mora. He's completely destroyed me there. Juve make it 1-1. They get themselves that away goal. Lucas Mora. My God. The pace he's got to get in behind defences. It's just absurdly good. And then he did a roulette as well to completely bamboozle me. And he makes it 1-1. Ah, oh, fair enough. So it's half time and I've got to say disappointed with the amount of chances we've had and not taken because yeah we can't do that in the Champions League. Dembele scored a screamer. We, we could have easily scored maybe a couple more goals and be 3-1 up so that's disappointing because we know when your opponent has got Ronaldo, Dybala and Lucas they're going to find themselves goals somehow so second half we've got to be more clinical. Once again to Dybala, this is problems for us, Dybala goes backwards for Arthur Melo, it'd be humiliating to see Arthur do something against us. Ronaldo now, looking for the pass out wide for Lucas, the goal scorer, back in for Arthur Melo, delict with the most crucial interception you'll ever see. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, after stopping that attack somehow, defensively, Longley has now picked up an injury and it looks serious, it looks really, really serious. We're going to miss out on long live for the rest of the season by the looks of it. That's going to be painful. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. For now, Jules Conde comes on. And hopefully we can get through this game without missing long live too much. So Gino Dest is in a lot of open space. Looks for Dembele. Dembele could chip the keeper. And that's off the bar. But on the rebound, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Right place, right time. And we get some objective or something. I don't even know what that is. But Barcelona make it 2-1. Champions League round of 16. I was really fearing the worst in this game. Because Juve were just getting dominant. They were creating a lot of chances. You guys saw. Delict had to make like an outrageous interception to save us there. But finally... We get ourselves the goal that puts us 2-1 up. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, a proper poachers finish that one. Wait, what? Own goal? It's so scary seeing Lucas run with the ball because he's one of the most overpowered players this year. Alvaro Morata looking for Paolo Dybala here. We got to block the angles. We couldn't block any angle there. But to be fair, you normally don't expect Dybala to score with his right foot. But he's just done that. And Juventus make it 2-2. This is proving to be a Champions League classic at the camp now. I'm not enjoying this though because to all, going to Turin and trying to get a win is, is not going to be easy at all. But now Juventus have got two away goals from this fixture. It's been a ridiculous Champions League night. Paolo Dybala getting the equaliser for Juve. Oh, finally Des with the challenge and we get the ball away. If we would have lost this game at the camp now, I think our Champions League hopes would have been crushed then and there. In fact now, we might have a chance on the break. Usman Dembele, oh, couldn't do much, although we still might have a chance, Dembele, 90th minute, oh my god, that's off the post, are you kidding me, man, what, how, we could have won this game at the death in added time, oh, come on, Dembele, off the post, are you kidding me, that is so painful, seriously, man, the game ends as a two-all draw, that second leg is going to be unbelievably crazy now, so much to play for in Turin. Wow. Dembele though, I've got to be honest, he was brilliant in this game. Is this some sort of a sick joke? Seven months? Clément Longley is out for the next seven months with an ACL injury. Our season is going to be... I don't even know. That is a player that could end our season. 
because we need Longley at the back. He is quite possibly my best defender in this team. Along with Delict, you know, you could argue who's better. But this is painful. Jules Conde now just has got immense responsibility on his shoulder. My god, that is painful. Longley injured for the next seven months. Wow. Didn't expect that. that seven months is long. Ha, ah, come on. Next episode, I guess the drama continues. We've got big games in La Liga as we try to maintain top spot. But of course, Juventus in the Champions League. That second leg is going to be nuts, guys, honestly. Based on what happened in the first leg, I'm expecting even more drama in Turin. But also, let me know your thoughts on what we discussed about a potential job offer coming in from PSG. Things could really be interesting with that. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on it. Season goals wise, this was definitely an underwhelming episode. But yeah, we only played a couple of games, so not much room to make progress. We still got a goal contribution with both Puig and Ansu Fati. Player of the episode now, I think it's got to be between Usman Dembele and Pedri once again. Pedri was superb for us in La Liga. Dembele scored an outrageous goal, you know, with the rainbow flick and then finessing at top bin. So... Definitely between the two of them. Let me know who you think deserves to win player of the episode. But for now, this is where we wrap things up. This was a pretty big episode. We've got a lot to discuss with the PSG decision. Apart from that, Champions League next episode. The drama continues against Juventus and Ronaldo. It's going to be fun. But if you guys have enjoyed today's episode, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time.